You can finally say that there's an American accent in my videos. Oh no, I wanted to wear a, a t-shirt with an English caption, especially for this video and you can see it, uh, of course. Once in a while I get asked how I learned English to the point that it is now, even though it's not perfect, definitely, uh, but I get questions about it and I address this problem a few times. When you say a few times, there's feud inside. There's feud inside. That's what she said. But I think it maybe deserves a separate video uh, just so that I put all the information about my English in just this one place. Because it's a whole story, really. So, let's start from... Uh... Oh, yeah. It actually reminded me that, that I wanted to talk about something. So sometimes I get comments where someone says that I have good vocabulary and good fluency in the language, but my pronunciation and accent aren't very good. Um, and I just so much don't agree. I don't agree to this level that I can't even imagine that someone can actually think that. I, like, wow. Not even because I think my pronunciation is very good, but first of all, because I know my vocabulary is the worst. Definitely my biggest weakness is vocabulary. Yeah, the problem with me learning English throughout my whole life was always vocabulary, because grammar was always practiced at, uh, at during the classes. Uh, and vocabulary was something that you actually had to learn, you actually had to study for it. You, you had to sit, motivate yourself to memorize a list of words, and I could never get myself to do that. At school, sometimes there were these small tests for vocabulary only, where you had a list of words and you just had to translate them. And sometimes I got really bad grades in those because I just never, I just never studied. Sometimes I had to take the test again to improve my grade. And it really left a mark in my today's English because uh, I teach English now and sometimes there are these words that I really need to check because I either don't know these words at all, sometimes I see them for the first time, literally, um, and sometimes I know how to use them, but I have no idea what the translation is. So, yeah, I, I am really bad with vocabulary. And you can easily see that in my videos, that I either um, can't find words to describe a certain thing, or I use the same word constantly. There are just these uh, word themes for every video, like I say peculiar all the time, or certain all the time, or something like that. And there are also these habits that I have that show that I have very little vocabulary, even in Polish. Yeah, I, I don't have a very good vocabulary in Polish either, especially when I talk spontaneously. So yeah, so I say this, I, I say so yeah all the time and I say um, or something all the time and I say all the time all the time and you know all, all this stuff oh yeah that's also a habit ah it's awful it's not like I have a problem memorizing words because mostly I just see a word once and I already remember it but uh, it's just the thing that I didn't study vocabulary back when I was in school so I have just some you know, some gaps, I guess. But okay, let's start with the story. Story time! <laughs> so I guess it's a bit unique, maybe, uh, but my first contact with English was Cartoon Network, because we had Cartoon Network only in English when I was about six, I think, um, and I never had it in Polish, so I, so some of my friends would, uh, like, quote things from the Powerpuff Girls or Dexter or Ed, Ed and Eddie and I was like, uh, I never watched it in Polish so I have no idea what you're talking about. And also Cow and Chicken, I Am Weasel, yeah, uh, and I only watched those in English and it's so weird. And I didn't know any English back then so I probably didn't understand most of it but I got a lot of it uh, just out of context. 
And well, cartoons are very visual, so it's really easy to get things out of context. So uh, yeah, so I remember even learning some words like shovel or something. Yeah, because it was just really obvious what the word meant. Of course, I had no idea how to spell it. But uh, but yeah, but I guess it might have um, kind of got me used to to the usage of it, of the English language. So it was a bit beneficial. But then we got a basic cable and I didn't have Cartoon Network, but I had others, uh, other channels and, and they were just never in English again. And I think along with the English channels, I had um, a class in kindergarten. It was in the last uh, grade of kindergarten, so I guess it was uh, kind of preschool. And I remember exactly that aside of things like my name is or how are you and good evening and this kind of stuff I, I, I really remember consciously learning the word monster and I, I just consider the word monster as the first word I have ever learned in English because there were these comics where one of the characters was a monster so yeah It's important to note that I started official English at school when I was 10 years old. It was in fourth grade. I didn't have English in grades first to third because it, it was just not in the program. Now children learn since they are six or seven years old, so that's good. But I had a big gap between the classes because I had one class in preschool and then I started official English when I was 10 years old, so yeah. So to fill the gap, I, uh, I mean, my parents <laughs> bought me um, this, this magazine called English Junior and as I really liked Looney Tunes back then, it was just perfect for me because seeing and learning English and hearing English from my favorite characters uh, <laughs> from my favorite cartoon, or at least one of the favorites, uh, was pretty cool. And there were a lot of things for kids like uh, sticking, like stickers that you had to like stick into, uh, uh, y you know, into the pages so so that it makes sense, or or just uh, some kind of drawing exercises. So probably not really that much English was in there, but I think I learned a lot actually from this magazine. I still remember one song by heart. Like really, it was about uh, animals living in the zoo. I think I could sing the whole song now. It was pretty short and pretty easy. So, but I was like seven when or, or eight when I uh, when I memorized it. So it was kind of weird. That was pretty useful. I think I'd been buying English Junior for like uh, a year or so, maybe two years. I'm really not sure because I barely remember, and I don't have anything, any any of the issues of the magazine anymore. And they there were these cassettes. Is that the word? Because you know it wasn't really the age of CDs yet. Maybe it was, but just that cassettes were way more common back then still. I just feel so nostalgic about this magazine. It was just perfect. And another thing uh, was games, of course, because my brother played a lot of games and I played along with him, or at least I watched him play, and many games just weren't in Polish. They just weren't available in Polish. So we had to play in English and we had to figure it out. I think from the games back then I learned um, some basic things like play or save or load or main menu or something like that but probably sometimes I got uh, something something more and that was um, that was a good way to see English written when I learned from the cartoons it was mostly just hearing English and here I had just text mostly and also, I remember my friend teaching me the alphabet, the song for the alphabet, that was pretty cool. And I guess since the Cartoon Network thing, I was just really curious about the English language. I was just always very curious when it came to this. So then in fourth grade, I started learning English at school and I continued learning it until I was 19 almost and when I graduated high school, so that's like nine years of learning. So in elementary school, of course, we learned things like 
uh, present simple, present continuous, and some words like animals and uh, I like this, I like that, just very simple things uh, and colors and stuff. Uh, and I remember that we didn't really like her teacher. I mean, she wasn't the worst, but she wasn't the best either, <laughs> I guess. But we did learn something. And I also want to know that back then, I wasn't really the best student of English in my class. I mean, I, I wasn't bad. I was pretty good at, at English, but it's not like I was an overachiever or something. Just a basic student who got like A's and B's and, you know, nothing really extraordinary. But then when I was 12 in sixth grade, I, um, I gained a lot of interest in music. And I started listening to the bands that I still listen to, like Linkin Park. <laughs> and I remember memorizing the lyrics of In The End, of course, I already mentioned that in one of the videos. And I would translate the lyrics, and I was just very curious about the meaning of songs. And starting from that point, I'd translated lyrics of my favorite songs for years. And I learned so, so much from the songs, especially vocabulary, some idioms, uh, some very weird grammatic forms, and wow, yeah, that, that was a lot. And I think this is a really good way of learning English, because songs are mostly written in a very natural, everyday language, so you can learn a lot about just life, <laughs> just life vocabulary, I guess. But sometimes they can be a bit more poetic and a bit more complicated. So yeah, I made a lot of translating mistakes when I think about them, oh my god, <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was still a very big learning experience. I even had a blog for translating songs, but it's, it's not there anymore, unfortunately. I mean, I, I wasn't the one who deleted it, it's just that the... I guess the site stopped supporting blogs and just all the blogs vanished. Oh, and when I was 12, I remember that I, uh, I figured out how to say this weird sound of th and th. <laughs> I don't know if you remember the music video for In The End by Linkin Park, but there is this close-up on Mike Shinoda when, when he says one thing. I don't know why, it doesn't even matter how high I try, you know. And I just looked at it and I was like, oh, so that's how, so that's how you do that. <laughs> yeah, because no one really taught me, obviously. So thanks, Mike, I, I guess, I love you. <laughs> I didn't like to learn the vocabulary for, for classes, but I kind of um, made up for it from the songs because I learned a lot like hundreds of words and the funny thing is that I um, sometimes I think of a word and I remember exactly which song I learned it from it's crazy I know I've learned a lot of weird vocabulary from Tool's songs and uh, while we, we're already at that let's just jump right into high school because that that was the time when i started um listening to more complicated music let's say and still also translating and trying to understand the lyrics in the first um google translate video i had the word benevolent and i didn't remember what it meant i, I thought i saw the this word for the first time but actually no i i learned this word from jambi by tool <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, but I just, I don't know, I just forgot, I guess. Benevolent song. God, I love this song. And I remember that I, on my favorite album by System of a Down, I thought that toxicity was a play on words on toxic city. Because in the song Toxicity, there is something about a city. So, but it's... It's, uh, I guess it is a play on words because there's uh, the toxicity of our city, right? But I really thought that toxicity wasn't, wasn't really a word. I guess if a few years ago I learned that toxicity is actually a word, it's a noun for toxic. <laughs> yeah. And going back to middle school, I also, I, I think I was a pretty good student at this point already, but I made some really st stupid mistakes now that I think about it. I remember having some spelling uh, problems, uh, yeah, and well, I couldn't really speak, right, yet, of course. 
I, I couldn't speak for a long time still. And I think up from middle school, I really liked English. So in high school, I was in the advanced group. And even though I already said that the system of division uh, in my high school wasn't the best, um, I still think I learned a lot in high school. Probably a lot of it from tools, songs and others, but, um, but on the lessons I think I also learned a lot. There was also a lot of vocabulary, so that was the point of my life when I got pretty bad grades sometimes in English because of the vocabulary tests. But when it came to grammar, I mostly um, explained it to my friends who had a problem with it. So, I, I don't know, I just kind of got it. Of course, I still make grammar mistakes, but mostly only when I speak. When I write, I, I don't think I make... Well, maybe sometimes I don't know about something. Sometimes maybe I confuse the order of the words or something. Oh yeah, I spilled the water. Great. But mostly I, I don't think I make grammar mistakes when I write, but when I speak, I make a lot of mistakes. Um, but I do that in Polish too, so it's just that I have constant brain farts. I'm not sure how my pronunciation was in high school. I guess it just started becoming better at this point um, because I also watched a lot of stuff like Whose Line Is It Anyway or uh, South Park, of course. Uh, that's since middle school, really. And it was and it was always in English with Polish subtitles, maybe even with English subtitles. Um, and I understood a lot. So up until I graduated high school, I had a good understanding in English because I could translate songs, I could uh, understand everything that I watched uh, only with subtitles back then because I had a pretty bad hearing uh, still but, but yeah, but I had a, had a good understanding but I couldn't really speak and I think one thing about my Matura exam uh, shows the lack of vocabulary because I was writing the advanced Matura when I didn't even know the word foreigner like really, like a basic word, yeah and when I was like 24 I still couldn't pronounce this word properly I guess I had a real issue with foreigners, a very Polish thing <laughs> And at some point in high school, I decided, kind of, that I wanted to be an English teacher. But at the same time, I didn't want to go to English studies at university. So I guess I achieved it. That's weird, because I'm probably an awful teacher. And on my advanced matura, I only got 61%. So it's like a C, I guess, right? Uh, it wasn't a very good score, I admit. I was very disappointed. And I remember this one situation after I already graduated uh, high school. Um, after my matura, it was already the summer. I was with my friends and uh, some kind of Greek guy approached us and he just asked about some directions and just some random stuff. And I completely forgot all of the English language in me at that moment. And my friend's boyfriend um, was supposed to probably not know English as well as I did, uh, even though he was older, but he was the one who mostly talked to the Greek guy, so yeah. And here I also remember a word that I learned in this situation. It's lighter. Uh, I mean, a lighter. I, I didn't know that you call zapalniczka this way. Yeah, and I felt really stupid because I wanted to be an English teacher already and I couldn't even speak to a foreigner like about basic stuff. I couldn't even give directions, so yeah. So I realized that I lack a lot when it comes to English, um, but I didn't do anything about it up until I was 21 for like two years, I think, yeah. So then a big thing happened because I joined the Sims group. It's international, so I had to write in English. And it's really hard to believe that such a small thing like a group on Facebook uh, taught me a lot of English, but it did. Writing stories about my Sims only in English, communicating with people only in English, even if it was only typing, it helped with my fluency so much. I, I also met some people and we were friends on Facebook and we would just talk on Messenger and all the time and yeah, and that kind of made me more confident when it came to communicating in English 
so also I set up my sims page in the first posts you can see some grammar mistakes or maybe sometimes even spelling mistakes that I did um, but I got better and better and I remember that I was pretty insecure about my accent, that it was too Polish or something. And not long after, I started my YouTube channel. And again, even here on my YouTube channel, at first I wasn't very fluent, I wasn't very good. Uh, my pronunciation wasn't very good either. I hear a lot of difference. You probably don't, but I do. I hear a lot of difference, dude. But yeah, when it comes to the English that I speak now, pretty fluent. Sometimes I make grammar mistakes or pronounce things a weird way or get confused or something But mostly it's very communicative uh, to the point where I can teach uh, and speak to my students in class in English all the time To this point, it's YouTube that polished my English Not, not polished, uh, un unpolished my <laughs> English It's been like four years since I started the channel So that's a lot to practice Right? I think about five years ago I would have a huge problem communicating with foreigners and now I'm like, come at me! Come and speak! <laughs> Hi Tony! So now I think I know the language pretty well, I am pretty fluent, sometimes I get stuck, but it is fine. And I am actually really proud of my pronunciation, so shut up. <laughs> no one can take away my pride. And even from my colleagues from the language school, I think it's pretty rare for people to be able to speak English fluently. They know a lot of grammar, they know a lot of vocabulary, they know everything, but sometimes there's just a huge problem with talking. It's a very common problem for Polish people because you don't really practice speaking that much during classes at school. It really depends, but, but yeah, most people who do know English well can't really speak. I guess it's a problem of perfectionism of some kind that we just feel like we have to do it right. We have to make a perfect sentence and we are so scared of making a mistake. And I think when I started communicating with, with foreigners a lot and also when I started my YouTube channel, I kind of stopped being so scared. I make some really stupid mistakes sometimes, but I just laugh at it or cut it out or something or make an annotation or just whatever because it's okay. You make mistakes in your mother tongue too, so what's the big deal? And I also want to note that I've never attended an additional class in English and now I teach people at additional classes of English in a language school, so that's very weird. I, I feel very weird about it. So that is gonna be it for this video. I hope it was something you were curious about and I hope it was pleasant to watch or whatever. <laughs> and you can still give me ideas for this series, you can still give me things to talk about, stories to tell, and yeah, as always. Remember to subscribe and like if you like the video and see you in the next one. Bye! Ha, <laughs> brudne naczynia z lewej znowu. <laughs>